Hello and welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So today I'm going to be building this noise gate circuit and seeing how well it works, or even if it works. But first, a little talk through of the circuit and how it works. So, here's our gazinta, and here's our gazalta. So some of that signal goes up here and goes into this transistor here where it gets amplified. Then it gets rectified to DC. So this transistor, when there's a lot of signal, this transistor will turn on and it will shunt this voltage here to ground. So this transistor stays off. But when there isn't much signal, this transistor will not be turned on so this transistor is going to get the 9 volts through this 470k resistor and it's going to shunt the rest of our input signal to ground and not let it through. But when there is enough signal, it'll do bugger all to it, so yeah. Well, I built it. Again, pay no attention to this because I still want to do an experiment with that, but this is the noise gate circuit. I haven't tested it yet, it's probably not going to work, because as usual I don't have the specified components so I've had to improvise. So instead of using BC109 transistors, I've used BC547s, and for the field effect transistor I've stuck in an MPF102. Should still work because they're all basically the same, well not exactly the same, I mean, but these are kind of like the same as a BC109 and that's the, kind of like the same as whatever other field effect transistor was in there. I know what I'm talking about. I know I don't sound like it, but yeah. So, I think it's about time to whip this thing up and see if it works. Okay, well, this was a bit of a flop. It just doesn't work. I spend the better part of an hour tinkering with this circuit, trying to get it to work. I've even had the crazy idea of changing the JFET to a MOSFET. And yeah, no matter what I do, I just cannot get it to work, so I guess that's the end of the video, so until next time, goodbye. Okay, did you really think I was going to give up this easily? So I say, screw this circuit, I'll just make my own. It's a bit here and there, and this is not the final circuit, this is just pretty much an experimental version, but I'll take you through a little talk through of it. So just like before, we've got a MOS, um, JFET, that's actually acting as the audio gate to simply shunt it to ground or let it through. So, audio comes in here, gets amplified by this op-amp here, then it gets converted to AC, then rectified to DC, so we've got a nice peak hold circuit here. This one here is set up as a comparator. So when there's a low voltage in here, this thing is going to be high, it's going to turn on this MOSFET, and not let the signal come through to the rest of the circuits. When there is enough voltage here, this MOSFET will go low, turning off this JFET, so the signal can go all along here, through there, and then to the final output stage, and that's basically how it works. I'm not very good at explaining things. Well, there goes another mouse. Yep, this is what I think of your stupid USB device not recognized. Well, I'll save the wire anyway. Or at least I would if it was color-coded properly. I mean, look at that. It's not even proper USB color code. Whose stupid idea was that? I'm gonna do a little experiment here. Now, ignore all this stuff here. That's nothing to do with it. It's just this stuff here. I wanna see just how well this kind of circuit works using a field effect transistor to gain an audio source. So, this is basically the circuit. You can see that. I've got some music playing through the circuit right now. I'll turn up the speakers so you can hear it. It's rather gargly. Anyway, I'm just going to connect the positive up to the field effect transistor's gate. And that does gate it out. And if I connect the ground, that might stop some of that gargling. No, it doesn't. That's interesting. 
Okay. Let's just turn that off for a minute. So, I'm going to replace this with the MOSFET and see what happens. Hopefully I've got this the right way around. Make sure it's not shorting out on anything. Okay, so let's turn that back up. Well, no more gargling, that's good. Alright, I'm going to put positive into the gate. Ah! Sound goes. Okay, I'm going to connect the gate to ground. Sound comes back. Hmm. That's actually working pretty well. I'll put the microphone up to the speaker so you can hear that effect much better. Well, I must say, I'm very surprised by that. I did not expect that to actually work. So yes, I think in my design, I'm gonna go for a MOSFET instead of just a plain field effect transistor. All right, so I have built up this top part of the circuit. I made a few changes as well. So just ignore the stuff at the bottom here. That's not, um, I haven't done that yet. And also instead of a JFET here, I have put an LED just so I can see what's going on. So at the moment we just have the peak detector and a circuit that's going to turn this light out when it receives the sound. Now I'm going to power this up. Of course it would help if I was using the right lead. And I'm just going to measure a few voltages. Oh yeah, how if I turn the power supply on as well. Okay, so we should have about half of the supply voltage here. I'm powering this on 12 volts, so we should have about 6 volts here. We should have about 6 volts here. And yes, yeah, 6 volts there. So, measuring at the audio input, we should have 6 volts. And indeed we do. Okay. Measuring at the chip's audio output. Let's see what voltage we got there. Yep. 6 volts. So far so good. And we should have 6 volts in this little bit here. And yes we do. So that's good. That LED looks a lot brighter on the camera than it does in real life. I'm just going to start adjusting this controller and at some point that should go out. There we are. I can make it blink. So, I think it's time to hook this up to an audio source and see if it works. Okay, so I've got it connected up to my microphone preamp now, which you can see it dangling down there, holding on for... F so the signal from this microphone is getting amplified and going into this circuit. So if I tap the microphone, that little light should go out and then come on again in a couple of seconds or so. There we go. And it doesn't appear to be coming on again. Hello? Oh, wait, I know. I've just had an idea. I think I know what's going on here. See, uh, I've just realized something. Uh, this capacitor here um, the peak hold capacitor, well, that's getting charged, but I've just realized that it's got no way to discharge. I just pulled a random resistor out. I'm just going to put that across the capacitor. If I can find somewhere to actually stick the wires in, I might have to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery here. Let's just unplug that. All right. Stick this resistor in. That's these holes. 
Gonna be the ones across the capacitor. Okay, yeah. Right. LED came back on. Now I've got to find some way to plug this back in. Sticking two wires in the same hole here. Alright, uh, tap the microphone again. This time it's not working at all. Okay. Might just need to adjust the sensitivity here. I'm gonna get that just about, about there. Ah. I think it's working. Yep, that's picking up my voice. See, every time I speak, the little light goes out. I think I've got it just a little bit too sensitive at the moment. Test, test, one, two, three. Welcome to Cool to Clem FM, home of the best damn music in the whole world. Better than that EDM rubbish. Yeah, I think that's working. I've just knocked the camera down. Okay, that wasn't a real fart. That was just me making a sound with my mouth. We've got an effective gate circuit, or rather, peak hold circuit. Okay, yeah, the release time needs some work, but we're making progress. So I think it's time to build the rest of the circuits. All this stuff down here. And replace the LED with um, MOSFETs. So I think a MOSFET will work better. Because you saw how well the MOSFET worked before. Well, I know some people are going to flame me if I don't provide a scope view, so uh, that's what I'm doing right now before I move on. So, channel 1 is connected right here. And channel 2 is connected right here. And we can see the amount of amplification that the op amp is doing. So you can see we're getting about two times amplification, which is pretty much where I want it. So now I'm going to move channel 2's probe onto the uh, rectifier, or voltage peak holder, whatever you want to call it, and see what we get there. This is going to be a little bit difficult. I'm going to go over to channel 2. I'm going to put this on to DC coupling. Okay, let's just turn that up a little more. Maybe just a little bit more. And now you can see when I speak. Yeah, that's pretty much speaking for itself. So you can see when I speak, this line goes up and down, representing the voltage coming out of the... Uh, um, um, this part of the circuit. Yeah. So now you've seen that all working. Okay, so I have built up the whole circuit. And I've left the LED in so I know the state of the, um, audio gates. Let's just probe what's coming out of the buffer which should be exactly what we're getting here, but inverted. So I'm just going to put my probe on there, if I can get it on there. And you can see that's working, we're getting signal, you can see it's responding to my voice. But what we're getting out of the final stage... Well, we're getting this. We're getting a lot of popping and clicking, but we're also getting some distortion there. So, I'm going to have to come find a solution to that. Okay, excuse the shoddy camera work here. Anyway, I think I've fixed the problem. The trouble was that, um, firstly, when the gate was opening and closing, as it was basically shorting this to ground, it was throwing the bias of this op amp all over the place. So, I added that capacitor there to fix that little problem. And also, I've managed to completely remove all the DC that was going into this part of the circuit just by adding this 10K resistor here. Before, it just had this 22 microfarad and this tw and 
10k resistor. And I'll say this again, I am absolutely um, amazed at just how well a MOSFET will do the job. So, um, I think the only other thing I'm going to have to do is probably change this one microfarad capacitor to a two microfarad because the release time is a little bit too short, so that's what I'm going to change next and then we'll hear directly from it. The circuit's pretty much complete now. But before I do a direct hookup, I'm just going to explain the setup we've got here. So, yeah, I've got my noise gate circuit. Again, ignore what's on the left side, that's nothing to do with it. That's another circuit that I'm going to be tinkering with in the future, which is why it's still there. So, on the left side, on these two um, sponges, got the microphone just to shield it from vibrations and everything. Then we've got the noise gate circuit. And that's going into the tape recorder. And this is what we're gonna hear from. So, let's see how well this works. Oh look, I've got a wire sticking out. That's not good. Well, okay, so this is how the homemade noise gate sounds. Like I said, being picked up from this microphone, wire in front of the camera so you can see it, and that's going through my homemade noise gate circuit and being recorded onto the tape deck. I might actually leave this LED in to show the status of the actual gate, but yeah, you can hear that when I talk, the LED goes out and the gate opens and lets the sound through. I can hear a little bit of hum from the microphone. Um, that's because it's right near the power supply, so it's a bit um, magnetic noise from the transformer. But yeah, I'm going to call this a pretty experiment and do not look at it. It's in a terrible state. So, yeah. All in all, I think this is a pretty successful circuit. A lot more successful than that circuit. And of course, here is the final circuit for those of you who want to try it out yourself or make any modifications to it or whatever, I don't really care. Okay, future claim editing the video here. There's one thing I forgot to say about, so I'm just going to say it here. I want to say about the resistors. Now it looks as if this op amp, this op amp, and this op amp have their own set of um, biasing resistors. That's not exactly true, because this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor are all the same resistor. And also, this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor are all the same resistor. I just drew them as separate resistors to make it more easy to see what's going on, and I think that's just complicated the whole thing. So yeah. The only 56 kilo ohm resistors in the circuit is this one and this one, which are also connected to this op amp and this op amp to bias those two. Also, why am I using 75k resistors to set the gain and everything? Well, I'm just out of 100k resistors. So I just used the next last value I could find, which in this case happens to be 75k. So yeah, just ignore that. Use 100k resistors there. It'll work just as good. That's what I was originally going for anyway. Okay, back to the whatever I was saying about earlier. But anyway, until next time, goodbye. I've got to edit this video because it's probably 500 hours long and yeah, I've got a lot of editing to do now. So until next time, goodbye.